trouble is not in your set, it's in ours. <laughs> that was on, now you're on. Now I'm on? Okay. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the February 28th, 2019 meeting of the Delhi Township Board of Trustees. We will begin this evening's meeting first with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a, silence of mo a moment of silence. And tonight's moment of silence is, again, unfortunately, for another police officer killed while on duty. And this is for Nicholas Gallinger. And Nicholas actually was a police officer in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and he was the victim of a hit and run, and he actually grew up in Claremont County. So we will have Nicholas in our thoughts and in our prayers. He's leaving two children, ages 9 and 14. So join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. <coughs> All right, we've got a lot on the agenda this evening with a lot of people here to celebrate. So we'll begin first with the approval of the minutes, Mr. Luby. Motion to approve the minutes from the Board of Trustees meeting held on February 13th, 2019, and dispense with the reading. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Motion to approve bills for payment. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Motion to approve the payment of overtime for pay periods ending February 12th, 2019. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Motion passes. Report from our fiscal officer, Mr. Luby. Resolution 2019-022, resolution approving purchase order obligations incurred on behalf of the township by the township administrator, authorizing payment of certain purchase order obligations and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Resolution Mrs. carries. Mm. As far as significant transactions since the last meeting, as far as disbursements on 221, our payroll was $277,000. On 214, we received a real estate tax advance for $2,115,000. And then uh, this week, we also submitted our 2018 annual financial statements, and they have been accepted by the uh, state auditor. So 2018 financial reporting is taken care of. That's all I have. All right, trustee's correspondence, trustee Davis. Uh, not at this time. Trustee Sturtz. Uh, yes, um, if you're not on our citizens alert, um, you would have missed this text, but you may have seen a lot of action over around Lariat, Cleander, Cleves Warsaw this afternoon. I know I did, it was in my back door. Um, but there was an uh, attempted um, robbery or burglary in Green Township, which we assisted with, and everybody has been apprehended, one by foot and one by car, no by sea, um, and uh, at Cimarron and Cleese Warsaw. So wonderful, wonderful work by our forces along with the help of Green Township. So thank you. Okay. Ooh. Way to go. <clears throat> All right, not to put another one on Green Township, but maybe some of you heard the news report on Channel 9 regarding 350 million gallons of raw sewage being poured into Muddy Creek coming from Delhi Township. I'd like to formally tell you that's not us. <laughs> okay, and, uh, it's, it's close, it, it's on the line, so we'll, we'll give them that, but um, Channel 9 did kind of make a mistake there, and I just want everyone to know that Delhi is, is not pouring the raw sewage into the Muddy Creek. Okay, if that's all for, did you have anything else, Ms. Riley? Nope. Okay. All right, then we'll continue with um, tonight's special presentations. We have a motion proclaiming Thursday, February 28th, 2019, as Tom Winkler Day in Delhi Township, Hamilton County, Ohio. I proudly move this motion. And I second it proudly. All those in favor? 
Yes. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I would like to have Mr. Winkler come forward and chief, I guess maybe yourself. I don't know if if the incoming family, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Can this turn the other way? Yep. Okay. Um, for those of you, there's very few of you, who don't know Tom Winkler, he has been the leading force behind the Delhi Citizens Police Group for almost 17 years. Right? Or did I stop counting? Give and take a few? How well, many? 14 years. 14? All right. Well, Tom, we are so appreciative, the whole township is, of all the volunteer hours that you've done, all the different events that you've managed, how you've kept us in line through parking. You've, done, <laughs> you've, just, you've done so much that we wanted to make your retirement from the leading man at the Del Delhi Citizens Police Group mm. a special day for you. And so, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, we are proclaiming today, February the 28th, to be Tom Winkler Day in Delhi Township. So whereas Tom Winkler's friendship with the, with the police department began in 2000 when he graduated from the 4th Delhi Citizens Police Academy and became a member of the Delhi Citizens Police Association and Whereas Tom took on a leadership role with the DCPA when he was elected president in 2004 after serving as secretary for one year. And whereas recognizing the need to expand the organization's support of the police department, Tom was instrumental in the formation of the Citizens on Patrol, working with Chief Tom Bauer to establish a new organization's role and responsibilities and on obtaining the necessary equipment for patrols to begin in 2004. And whereas over the past 19 years, Tom has volunteered thousands of hours planning and coordinating fundraising events, he provided assistance with various police administrative duties and supported the patrol unit with special patrols and special assignments and has provided support to other police agencies when called upon for assistance and whereas even though Tom has stepped down as president of the DCPA on January the 25th, he intends to continue to support the police department as an actively engaged member of the Delhi Citizens Police Association and the Citizens on Patrol. And whereas the Board of Trustees would like to extend their deep appreciation and heartfelt thanks to Tom Winkler for his dedicated service to the police department. Now, therefore, be it resolved. The recognition of Tom Winkler's faithful service to the men and women of Delhi Township Police Department, we declare today, February the 28th, 2019, to be Tom Winkler Day in Delhi Township. Congratulations, and we are so grateful and thankful. Tom has a few fans here, <laughs> if, you, if you could kind of tell by the roar of the applause. So we'd like Tom to have a, a moment to say a few words. Hold on, me first. Oh, oh, Chief. Someone pulled rank on you, Tom. <laughs> we'll get his time. Now you know, I'll tell you the rest of the story, because all that stuff is... No, seriously, Tom, we appreciate everything you've done. I inherited Tom, so I can't say he was already president by the time I started. So. So for the majority of my 10 years, he was a president, so it's gonna, it looks a little different with Mike gonna be there, but Mike will do a great job, but he's got some uh, big shoes to fill. Um, so you've been doing it 14 years, half of your adult life, I guess. <laughs> so that's a, lo that's a long time. I think you did it the first year because you wanted to, and then nobody else would take it after that. <laughs> Correct? Until this year, you finally Pretty much it. <laughs> forced somebody to do it. So no, we greatly appreciate it. And honestly, when you talk about the hours Tom's put in, um, I mean, we do keep track of all the volunteers' hours, and I mean, we got some up around the 3,000 mark, so forth, but 
sitting down talking about we even quit counting for time be honest with you and it's north of 10,000 hours there's no doubt in my mind in 14 years um, just to give you an idea if you equate that to time just imagine coming in here just for 10 years every day of the year for half an hour and you would get up there about where Tom is as far as how many hours he's given to the department so Tom we truly appreciate it the best thing about this whole situation you're not going anywhere you just probably got a little weight off your shoulders I've probably seen you more coming in to do things since you gave it up so but that's what's nice is we're still we're still gonna have you around but really we appreciate not only what you do but how you led everybody uh, because we got a tremendous group here and ones that aren't here the association so we appreciate it on that note on behalf of the police department and the township because Tom wasn't just about the police department he was here for the entire township so I know everybody in the townships appreciate it appreciates what you've done so with that I'd like to give you a set of uh, sterling cut coasters I was looking for the other side. That's the other side of the box. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It. Yeah. In two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty used to a mic like Mike Davis is as well, right, Mike? We, we know how to do that. Um, actually, I'm very humbled and honored to be getting this presentation tonight. Uh, everything pretty much uh, that I've done for the township over my career uh, was done exactly for that, for the township. Um, I never asked for hours. I brought it all up and started it all, but I did it because I loved it. I mean, and I still love it. I mean, I've got great people out here that I've worked with over my career. Members of the DCPA are above reproach. You're all fantastic. And I just felt it was time after 14 years to, you know, turn it over and and uh, Mike Rosenthal and Kim Breedenbach and, and, the, and the board and the trustees are going to do just a, a phenomenal job. But I have to thank my family, everybody again here, the trustees, thank you all for this honor. And, and it, is, it is an honor. Chief Howarth, our assistant chief, Jeff Braun, uh, Lieutenant Bill Murphy. Uh, Joe Macaluso, all of our sergeants, corporals, all the staff officers. Um, I've got to know so many, many people here in Delhi Township, plus with many of the departments around the tri-state area. Um, I actually live a dream. Most of you probably don't know this, but when I was young and growing up, I wanted to be a police officer. That was one of the dreams I had. Um, I didn't get to do that. I had other obligations, but... Uh, I've done it for the last 19 or 20 years as a volunteer, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. So thank you all very, very much. I really appreciate this honor. My family, that backs me up. So God bless you all, and God bless our officers out there. Be safe. Thank you all. One more thing, Tom is the only person I can know that can drive a police car and actually do about three, well, probably it was more four or five, 360s in the middle of a two-lane road and not hit a thing. <laughs> Seriously. Not the COP car, a police car. So I can say it now. So that's the truth. The silly thing is he, he told me he did it. You know? I mean, he didn't hit anything. I was so. honest. That's right. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Well, so it's much. such a pleasure and an honor to be able to have this presentation tonight for Tom. And we'd also like to wish Mike Rosenthal the best of luck in, <laughs> in, in filling those shoes. <laughs> Trustee Davis, did you have anything to add? Uh, I think what was said was. Uh, 
pretty much dead on accurate. I'm glad the chief expounded a little bit and said it wasn't just about the police department, but it was about Delhi. And then Tom kind of took that from there. And it, and that's what it is about. It wasn't so much about the police. And it's just about uh, when you look at Tom Winkler, who I like to call the mayor. It's when I see him out in the video. I was saying he's the real true mayor of Delhi, and, and, and he is. Um, I think I was doing a show the one time, and, and you guys were all there. And I said, that's the mayor. And then everyone just looked at you, so I felt bad. So uh, you might have signed an autograph or two, which was fun, but um, but but that's what it's about, and that's what you what you see is what you get with Tom. It's 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 about serving. It's about loving his community. It's about living with his heart. And uh, you look at 14 years and the hours and everything that was put into it. He did it because he believed in Delhi. He believed in the community of which he served. So. God bless your journey, and I'm thrilled to hear you're still going to be around in some capacity, which is awesome for us. It's awesome for the township, so thank you. Thank you, Mike. Trustee Sturtz? Um, I could just reiterate everything everybody said, but um, I've always looked up to you and the work that you've done, and I think Mike will do a great job, and he, you have a great leader, a great uh, role model, and he's not going to be too far away, so we wish the organization which... We can't explain what the DCPA does, but I'm very grateful. I know all of us are very grateful for that. So we're in good hands, Delhi. So well, at, <laughs> at this time, because they also have a DCPA meeting tonight, <laughs> that's a pretty important one because they have an event Saturday night. Do, do, should I give a pitch for the Mardi Gras? Or do we still have any tickets available? Sold out. Good. So people, too bad. <laughs> Mardi Gras 2020. <laughs> so, um, DCPA, you are excused. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> so cute. <clears throat> nice presentation. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thanks. You deserve it. <clears throat> good, buddy. All right, good luck. You're welcome. Good. Thank you. All right, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Enjoy. Congrats. Is that your pen? <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you. I'll see you guys on Saturday. <laughs> Sorry. Just close we'll, the door. Uh, we'll shut the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan, are we on? Okay. We do have a second presentation this evening, and this is from Energy Alliances, a Mr. Rich Sir Race. Thanks for being here, Rich. Thank you. Um, disappointed that everybody didn't want to stay here. Um, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> you know, what sorry you had to follow that, too. <laughs> it, it happens often, actually. It happens often. Uh, thank you for having me here tonight. So, uh, that, as uh, Ms. C.B. had said, I'm Rich Serace from Energy Alliances. I, I'm here tonight um, as the aggregation partner of, of the township. We have been since uh, 2013 to um, ask for the approval to make a proposal of 0.399 cents per CCF of gas for the next 36 months. So the township is on a program that ends this uh, this May at currently 0.444. Um, so we are looking to lower that um, from both the current rate and from uh, actually the last two or three years. And uh, what we'll look to do at that point to ask for the approval is we're you know, working with other townships and other municipalities, and we are you know trying to do this as a group. Um, so the idea is that we'll end up locking in the price. Right now, if we would refresh it today, the price looks something south of, of that 399 number. But obviously, with it being a commodity, things can move, so that's why we're asking for a little bit of bandwidth. 
um, there. So that's what I'm, I'm here today is to ask for the approval of that price. So it's three nine nine for thirty six months. For thirty six months, correct. Okay, Trustee Davis, two questions. No, no, good. Trustee starts. No, and because we don't have a crystal ball, we can only that's assume exactly that's right. going and that, to know, track. So I was saying about the price, you know, with it being, a, it's a very fair price, right? It's, it's a flat, it'd be a flat rate for the next three years. Uh, the way the program is run, there's no termination fee, so there is no risk for anybody. Um, you know, if, if for whatever reason somebody does not like where the price is at, they can obviously opt in, opt out. And one thing different about some of the other prices out there, you know, there is there is a, a PUCO, so the Public Utilities Commission. They list prices for both gas and electric. There are actually only two prices right now. Um, well, I'll say one that looks like it's lower than where we would be, and that's for 12 months. Any other price that's lower than the offer we're making has termination fees, you know, seventy-five, a hundred dollars, and you know that's only good for the point in the moment that that person signs up. The way that this I think one of the points that you've always offered that it, that were not offered by some of these mm. other groups that are knocking on doors is the ability to opt in and opt out without penalty, and I think you know that's an important piece not to be quote fined because you you change your supplier. Mm. So it, that is still in force. It is. Okay. All right. I have no other questions. And thank you for being here. I have, yeah. Oh. If I might um, ask a few questions of, of Mr. Serace. What do we have now in place for our residents, and what has that been the last few years? What's the format of the program? Sure. Um, so what we've had the last couple of years is what we were calling the Flex Down program. So it was, in essence, a fixed price. But part of that price, um, not to get too technical, but there were options that were purchased on the commodity. So if the price of natural gas, you know, lowered a lot and we were, and we were able to sell those options, we were able to lower that price. Um, however, that ability um, came at a cost. You know, there was a premium to kind of pay for that ability of, of the price coming down. So really, uh, you know, a difference from the offer now and previous offers Though the other one was a fixed price, you know, we, we take away that ability to lower the price if the market happens to move lower. But you also paid a premium for that before to sort of have that ability. And that's why we feel comfortable with the price being quite a bit lower than where prices have been over the last few times that the township has aggregated. That, you know, it, it's, it's a good price to have and not have to pay any premiums to worry about the market coming down. But we're guaranteed that price for 36 months. You are. Starting, do you say May? Starting in June. 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 Yes. So right now, other pricing structures you see out there, how long are others locking in from a term standpoint, from a length? So as far as uh, things that people could opt into, so if, you know, say the door-to-door, -door, we're seeing a lot of 12 and 24 months. Um, a lot of the aggregations around, um, outside of the programs that we work with, we're seeing things in the 12 to 24 so as far as a program out this long without termination fees, we're not seeing that in the market at all right now. Okay. All right. So this is 36 months, and it's what you're asking the board to approve is to give me the power to sign up for the price when you, as our broker, say we found the price we think works best, but it won't exceed 0.399 in rate. Correct. And right now we're at 0.444. Correct. Okay. Yep. So we're pretty much asking the approval for you to sign at something at or below 399. And that likely happens within the next couple of weeks. Okay. Mr. Cameron, anything else? No, I'm good. I just, we had talked some and I just wanted to make sure for the sake of people listening that it wasn't too technical or right. as best we can prevent it. So they knew what we were doing and what they can expect from the pricing. I I spoke to one of your coworkers and it answered my question so I'm I'm briefed on what what you're presenting and I think the 36 months with a lockdown but the but the piece that people always get caught up in is that op in op out fine. So not to have that is an advantage to the program. How, how are the residents going to be notified? Yeah. Is there going to be a mailing going out to them? Yes, so uh, because the current program is coming to an end, um, everybody who is eligible will get a letter probably sometime, I would think, in April. 
Um, and as, as those materials get finalized, uh, I'll send those over to Mr. Cameron and he, he can send those. Is that possibly why everyone's getting all these inquiries as to your gas? Um, I mean, they're coming to the doors, they're, they're using phones. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's really prevalent. I mean, it's, it's big. I, um, and Mr. Cameron knows that sometimes I get too technical, so I'll try. I think some of it just has to do with the cycle itself, um, that right now it's not even just Delhi. We're seeing across most of our communities that there are probably two or three different suppliers trying to get people to do things. Um, you find a lot of times, whether it be gas or electric, around April, May seems to be kind of that cutoff because there's other things in the market that drive kind of their planning years. So I think they're making the assumption that people – or they're taking the, the, the they're flipping the coin that they're going to hit more people who expire around that April May to maybe transact and do something, but I don't know why they waste their time in communities that are aggregated because most times they can't get anywhere close to the price. All right, Trustee Sturts. Um, yes, um, I do know in our bill this month if anybody reads your inserts, which I normally don't, but they can contact Duke by Duke by April 18th and tell them to take your name off their list as customers. And so I did that, and they sent a, a correspondence saying that any further vendors who seek their, their list, we won't be on it. But if they were already have our name, we can't get off that one. But um, with that being said, so in the communication that you're going to be sending, you're sending it to everybody, even if they're on aggregate or not now. So, so con the letter will actually come from Constellation? It will likely have the, the Delhi seal on it, um, and it would be for anybody who is currently on the aggregation or anybody who is newly eligible for the aggregation. So if there is a resident or small business who has chosen to shop on their own, so they've taken one of those offers or, you know, or found something they wanted to do, they would not be on that list. Okay. Because just the way the state has said that person has chosen to do something, they're, they're not eligible for the initial window. Okay. But they can obviously, if at, at any later time, decide to come in if they would like. And it will tell them how to sign up if they're interested at the time. Yep. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Continuing along then, Mr. Luby. We have, public a hearing. we have a motion to approve the opening of the public hearing for 2018 road repair contract with regards to assessment of the costs of the sidewalks, including the portion of a driveway within the sidewalk easement and driveway aprons as part of the curb improvement against the abutting property owners. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Motion passes. All right, we will begin with the hearing then. Uh, public Works Director Ron Ripperger. Thank you, trustees. Um, this public hearing is to give the property owners an opportunity to be heard in reference to the uh, final assessment uh, of the cost of sidewalk, driveway aprons that have been repaired in 2018 under the Delhi Township Rehabilitation Project. Um, we've already sent out letters and received close to half of our payments out of 80 uh, properties that we actually did construction with. Those are more construction pictures. I probably should have put a couple finished product pictures, but uh, um, if we've already answered a lot of questions and got a lot of positive feedback. All right. Um, I don't see anyone here to offer any public comment regarding this hearing. All right. Then, uh, Mr. Luby, you want to move the motion to close? Motion to approve the closing of the public hearing for the 2018 road repair contract with regards to assessment of the cost of the sidewalks and driveway aprons against the abutting property owners. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Motion passes. <laughs> All right, Police Department, Chief Howard. Resolution 2019-23, resolution authorizing the purchase of utility van for the Police Department, trading in the current van with the value credited against the purchase price, declaring an emergency, and dispensing with a second reading. I'll introduce and uh, move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Chief? Yeah, this is a cargo van that we're getting rid of uh, that we bought in 2009, I believe. It's about 10 years old. Uh, we're getting really good money back on it um, towards the new purchase of a Ford Transit. And the Ford Transit will be utilized for big cases as far as crime scene. All the crime scene for big cases equipment will be stored in it. 
and we'll also utilize it. It is also a passenger van, which the other one isn't. So when we need to transport four, five, six, or up to seven officers at one time or something else in the township, we can take the equipment out, fold the seats up, and get some people around. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. I have nothing from Public Works this evening but Chief Campbell from the Fire Department. Mr. Luby. Motion to approve the promotion of Peter P. Gardner from Career Firefighter EMT to Career Firefighter Paramedic at the rate per the collective bargaining agreement with the IAFF Local 3389, effective February 27th, 2019. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Motion carries. Congratulations, Pete Gardner. We have a motion to, hire, to approve the hiring of Zachary M. Roselle as career firefighter paramedic in the fire department at the first year firefighter EMT rate per the collective bargaining agreement with the IAFF local 3389, subject to successful completion of physical exam and upon attainment of his paramedic certification, he will move to the first year career firefighter paramedic rate effective March 13th, 2019. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Motion to approve the hiring of Austin H. Pining as career firefighter paramedic in the fire department at the first year firefighter EMT rate per the collective bargaining agreement with the IAFF Local 3389, subject to successful completion of physical exam and upon attainment of his paramedic certification, he will move to the first year career firefighter paramedic rate effective March 13th, 2019. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Motion to approve the hiring of Kathleen M. LaCosta as career firefighter paramedic in the fire department at the first year firefighter EMT rate per the collective bargaining agreement with the IAFF local 3389, <coughs> subject to successful completion of physical exam and upon attainment of, the, of her paramedic certification, she will move to the first year career firefighter paramedic rate effective March 13th, 2019. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve the hiring of Corey M. Brown as career firefighter paramedic in the fire department at the first year firef firefighter EMT rate per the collective bargaining agreement with the IAFF Local 3389, subject to successful completion of physical exam and upon attainment of his paramedic certification. He will move to the first year career firefighter paramedic rate effective March 13th, 2019. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve the hiring of Eric P. Weiss as career firefighter paramedic in the fire department at the first year firefighter EMT rate per the collective bargaining agreement with the IAFF Local 3389, subject to successful completion of physical exam and upon attainment of his paramedic certification. He will move to the first year career firefighter paramedic rate effective March 13th, 2019. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Motion passes. Accept the resignation of full-time firefighter paramedic Anthony Molfetta, effective February 23rd, 2019. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Chief, congratulations. This looks like you've filled quite a few voids we've had. Yeah, I feel it's necessary, necessary to explain. Thank you, trustees. Um, Mr. Luby, have you caught your breath yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, what what this amounts to is um, we set out to ask the community to approve a levy in order for us to maintain our paramedic services, which would require three additional paramedic positions in the coming years. So with the approval from the community, we set out on November 14th, so we didn't waste any time to begin the testing process. So we set out and posted for applications. Um, we sat and reviewed those applications throughout December. Testing occurred in January and February, and here we are today. So what we set in motion during that period of time is uh, really to set out to hire these three additional paramedic positions We've since had one resignation full-time and a pending 
another full time. So with the total count and Pete's promotion to paramedic, it essentially opened up five potential spots that we could backfill. So it's the three additional and the two filling in for vacancies. Uh, Zach Rosell, Delhi born and bred, uh, no longer lives in Delhi, but has a tremendous amount of family in Delhi. And I, I will say this: I will save the best for, you know, their swearing in. So in the coming months, we'll set that up, and I. I'll officially introduce them to the township under those circumstances. But, uh, no, we're looking forward. Uh, Zach's been with us since 2016, so certainly his full-time uh, position with us is going to be icing on the cake. Um, Austin Pining, still probationary, Delhi born and bred, still in Delhi, had lots of family in Delhi. So it's good that out of the 24 candidates that we posted in this process, we were able to bring two internal candidates that work with us part-time. Um, like to hire them all, but it is a competitive process. Kathleen, Katie, Corey, and Eric all represent external candidates that made it through our process very successful. Um, young, bright, fresh faces ready to serve Delhi, and I couldn't ask for anything more. They all have tremendous attitudes, and uh, it, and I'm just I'm excited to bring them in here and show them off. Um, I'm really expecting big things for them over their careers, and, and I'm really looking forward to what they can provide us. Really, um, when it comes down to it, we've got a, a number of things to get them in order. You hired them all as paramedics at the MT rate because they're all in medic school. Um, short of that, we're going to work very hard to make sure that they complete that within their probationary period, and that's what we're really focusing on them. Primary is to get them through medic school. But with that investment on our behalf, um, they're going to be great candidates. Well, we'll look forward to meeting them. I think, are we going to have the swearing in on the 13th then? No, I Later. would say probably in May, somewhere in May, if we can fit it in. We've got to get them all dressed up and pretty by that time. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, congratulations on filling your vacancies. And it sounds like, you know, your, your testing and your interviewing process has, has really hopefully paid off well. It, it has. Great. Thank you. Great. Great planning. Anybody? No. All Great right. planning. Congratulations. Yes. And Pete Gardner? Yes, sir. He's been here how long? He was actually here since 2004. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So he served with us a number of years part-time before coming on full-time as an EMT. Went through medic school. Now with us <clears throat> full-time paramedic. So. And uh, Austin Pining's dad is a firefighter, was here, but is in Florence still or no? Correct. Austin is a – you're taking my thunder away. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's we'll a do third, it again. No, he's a third-generation <laughs> firefighter. Um, yeah. his, his dad – uh, went through our Citizens Fire Academy and is now serving in Florence. And his grandfather, Alan, Al Pining, served with Cincinnati, and I believe it was 47 years. Wow. wow. Yeah. Okay. I asked him in the interview if he had 47 years in him, and he wasn't <laughs> quite sure. <laughs> we'll let you uh, show yeah. him off here in a few Thank weeks. Thank you so much. I, I would like to make a note on behalf of the way – Chief has gone about the recruiting process and as compared to others, this has been more and more competitive for candidates because there's less folks entering the industry. And so a lot of places are hiring full-time. And so that part-time, full-time model is just kind of shifting. One thing that I think Chief helped set himself apart was, if you notice, Mr. Luby read a lot for each one of these because we had to capture a little bit different wording than normal because these are all folks in paramedic school and set to finish in like May, June. And so they have to f get that paramedic license or, the, or they cannot stay. So they will be paramedics. A lot of departments will not interview or consider you until you are a paramedic. Mm -hmm. So I think we've been able to pick a few really good candidates that might have been competing for other jobs. So that was something we talked about and Chief supported going about that route. So I, I think there's five good candidates, and there is more than five in the process, but five that we're moving forward to hire. So 
Good. That was a good job, Chief. Thank you. Yeah, good job. Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Luby. Resolution 2019-024, resolution authorizing the purchase of two 2015 EasyGo golf carts, trading in the 2006 and 1999 EasyGo golf carts with the value credit against the purchase price, declaring an emergency, and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Torbeck? Uh, we're just happy to get rid of our old golf carts. <laughs> uh, 20 years old is a long time for a golf cart, uh, so this is just to replace them with two. Uh, I know it says 2015, but they're actually just 2015 models. They're brand new golf carts, so okay. uh, we need them. Thank you. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Mrs. Sturtz. Yes. Resolution passes. You're welcome. Resolution 2019-025, resolution authorizing the administrator to amend the agreement with Constellation New Energy Gas Division, LLC, Constellation, as a natural gas supplier to the township's natural gas aggregation program, authorizing the township administrator to execute the agreement, declaring an emergency, and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I think we've already heard that from Rich. Okay. Move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Mrs. Sturtz. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2019-026, re resolution certifying abatement expenses at 467 Rosemont Avenue to the county auditor for assessment and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. DeLong? Yeah, as you can see at 467 um, Rosemont, we did go in there. We had to clean it up. Um, this bill will add, add $1,175 to their next tax bill. So just want to let the public know this isn't cheap. We kind of talked about it at the last meeting, but this will be an $1,100 um, bill that will be placed on their tax okay. so we can collect for our abatement cost. And as you see on the photos, the photos on the left were before and the photos on the right are after. Move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Seavey. <laughs> yes. Mr. Davis. Still, yes. yes. Mrs. Sturtz. Yes. <laughs> Resolution Old passes headed. twice. Old headed. Yeah, <laughs> not really. <laughs> Resolution 2019-027, resolution certifying abatement expenses at 753 Lullaby Court to the county auditor for assessment and dispensing with a second reading. Introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. DeLong? Yeah, as you can see again, at 753 Lullaby Court, the photos on the left are before. The photos on the right, that is snow on the ground, so it's not debris. Um, so the photos on the right are the cleanup afterwards. Um, this will be a $775 assessment placed on this property. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2019-028, resolution declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 450 Greenwell Avenue, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. DeLong? Yeah, as you can see at 450 Greenwell Avenue, there's a debris that has been placed under their deck in the back of the property. We did inspect the property this morning. It was still in that condition, so we do request to declare it a nuisance. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2019-029, resolution providing for the removal of a junk motor vehicle at 5180 Locust Avenue, 
declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. DeLong? There are actually two junk motor vehicles. They look the same in the photo, but they're actually two different vans. One's an Astro minivan and one is a conversion van. They are both still at that property as of this morning at 5180 Locust Avenue, so we do request you declare it a nuisance. Move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading, yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. Approve the eliminating the zoning coordinator position within the Community Development Department and terminating, terminating the employment of Thomas R. Stallhaber, effective February 9th, 2019. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Motion passes. Uh, public comments from anyone? I have no one signed in. Announcement of community events, Mr. Luby. With the High Parks presents The Amazing Taste on March 1st. It will be from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. It will be at the Delhi Senior Community Center at 647 Neb Road. The Delhi Historical Society Program, the flu pandemic and blizzard of 1918 to 1919, will be March the 11th from 7 to 8 p.m. It will be at the Delhi Park Lodge at 5125 Foley Road. The Delhi Township Veterans Association General Meeting will be March 12th from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. It will be at the Delhi Senior Community Center at 647 Neb Road. The Bailey Dementia Family Workshop will be March 13th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. We'll be at the Bailey Adult Day Enrichment Center at 401 Farrell Court. That's all we have. All right. Thank you, Mr. Luby. We do have need for executive session this evening, so if I can have that, please. To retire to executive session to consider the appointment, employment, and or compensation of a public employee of the township and to consider property acquisition. So moved. Second. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturts? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, that's it for this evening. We will be adjourning to the executive session. Just a reminder to everyone that our next meeting is Wednesday, March the 13th, here in the admin building at 6 o'clock. We hope to see you then. Thank you.